Hi there. This video lesson is on normalization and particularly on the first normal form. So we haven't talked too, too much about what normalization is broadly. We will do that as we go along. Uh, one thing it is, is uh, a set of um, design requirements requirements and we know that there's first second third and so on right so how do the does what's the first level how does it relate to the second so basically there's a series of increasingly stringent requirements so outside of here so so the the whole page is is all designs okay and then inside this circle is first normal form or 1NF designs. And then in a smaller and more restrictive circle, here's second normal form designs. And inside this circle is third normal form, fourth normal form, Boyce Cod normal form, I think they overlap somewhat, and increasingly restrictive. And as you get further and further in, you are going to wind up with, fur, with more and more tables. We want to focus on the, f on the first normal form, which is the least restrictive of the set of normalization restrictions. And it is not similar, particularly, to the other normalization forms that we're going to talk about. Relatively straightforward, relatively easy to achieve. The only potential for confusion is you may, at this point in the course, be taking what first normalization, what first normal form says for granted, which you shouldn't, because I think the interesting reason to talk about first normal form right now is that a very compelling set of competing data storage and data modeling approaches are throwing first normal form right the heck out the window of all things. So, first normal form says, the following. All values are atomic. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, we've come to understand uh, a table as our representation for our data with columns consisting of attributes, right? This could be attribute one, and this could be attribute two. A little messy there. And then rows with record one and record two, right? Nothing new here. What first normal form says is that in each of these cells, in this cell and this cell, and any such cells, that is, for a given record, for a given attribute, there can be one and only one value. Okay, so record one's attribute one can be Jane or Jose, but it could never be both. One attribute for one record equals one value. Simple enough, right? That's not new, that's not complicated. Okay, similarly, and we've talked about this throughout the course, but it's worth reviewing. Say you've got a, an attribute like, okay, so your records are gonna be people, and the attribute you're interested in is a, a skill. So you could say we got, um, now, a person whose social security number is 11-11-1111, and they're one record, and there's a skill attribute. So we've got this sort of situation, and we could want to put Java and SQL and Python kind of maybe comma separated in this cell, and we know that's no good. That violates the first normal form because we just learned that, right? But 
Another approach, and one that you'll see certainly in informal data modeling situations, right, is we'll say skill one, and we'll make a row for that, and skill two, and we'll make a row for that, and keep on going and have X number of skill columns that are designed to accommodate the fact that we can have a given record, i.e. employee number 1111111111, who has multiple skills. Well, we know that this approach is also, that's not appropriate for the relational model. That is not an appropriate workaround for the first normal form. That is, it is letter of the law first normal form, but it's cheating, it's problematic, we're gonna run out of room, uh, we're gonna waste space, we're gonna have a lot of nulls. This is not an appropriate approach. Okay, so the normal, first normal form is as simple as that, except one other thing I wanna talk about very briefly, let me get some blank space, is that, um, and we're not going to go into a great deal of detail right now, but a big, exciting, relatively recent development in the world of data, and I'm sure you've heard the term big data if you uh, are at all on top of developments in the information technology world, uh, or just read the newspaper for that matter. And this is an important technology in the development of big data techniques, and that is NOSQL databases. Now the NO is not as commonly misunderstood, no SQL, there is SQL, it is not no, but rather not only SQL, okay? And one of the important data representations for not only SQL databases, which are new and exciting and can manipulate data very, very efficiently and are definitely worth learning about, is that the, the representations, particularly the one you should be aware of is uh, JSON, or some people say JSON, um, and what I want you to know about JSON rep representations right now pertains directly to the first normal form. JSON representations are uh, very simple attribute pairs. So name, colon, and then in parents, Joe, comma, um, department, that's one of our favorite examples, uh, corporate, phone, colon, 215, dot, 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 close paren, okay, or close curly brace. So thus far, this looks very, 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 very similar to what we've been dealing with in that you could place it very conveniently into a table, one attribute value per cell in that table, everything would be fine. But get a load of this. This is also perfectly fine in a JSON and similar uh, sort of representation. We can say name Joe. All right, and that's all well and good. And one second here. Okay, so this part, nothing new, right? But get this, you can also have skills, colon, and an array of skill values, Java, C sharp, SQL, etc. And this could go on for as long as there are skills that Joe happens to have. And so you can have Joe that has who has three skills in this example. And the next one you could have, you know, Cindy. Oh, and my computer's lagging a little bit, so the, the handwriting looking even worse than level than usual. And Cindy could have an array with 16 different skills. And 
Abe, and I'm not writing it out, but you get the picture, could have zero skills. So basically what you're doing in JSON without getting any details, because I don't think we really need to worry about them within the context of learning about normalization, you can very intentionally blow first normal form right out the window and say, yeah, we are very proud of the fact that we have the flexibility to afford an array as a component of this object notation because an array allows us to expand and contract on a individual object by individual object basis how many of a given multi-valued attribute which is what skills is we've looked at multi-valued attributes before and we don't we don't buy into your for first normal form business there there are advantages to deviating from it there are disadvantages bottom line with first normal form at this point in the course it should feel so natural because it's such an important part of the relational model and how we've set things up that you should you know almost goes without saying so it should be easy to understand what's important to take away as well is it doesn't go without saying there are mechanisms for dealing with and storing and querying and retrieving and analyzing and manipulating data that are very 21st century you know fairly cutting edge and they aren't concerned with abiding by even first normal form never mind going back to that sort of bullseye pattern any of the more restrictive models so some food for thought um, I think that's it let me know if you have any questions study hard and uh, I'll see you online